What up, Pittsburgh Steel fans? Matty P, Shannon White here, back with the Steelers Global Perspective this week. We're a little bit, a little bit late on some of our content this week, but we're not really late. We're just giving you it a day later. Um, no, that's all right. We've got two different segments coming at you this weekend. All right, Shannon, we're going to crack straight into it. You and I have talked a lot about Patrick Queen the last, well, let's be, let's be straight. Let's be honest. And I heard a... Um, I heard a take this week on one of the NFL shows. I, I, I'll, be, I'll be honest, usually I like actually shouting that stuff out. I, I can't remember which one it was. Hmm. Um, oh, it might have been. Yes, it was. It was when the Steelers delay, they were talking about it um, in that sort of hour before the before the game kicked off. They were talking about there about the Raiders. I think it was Garrett talking about it, actually, Jason Garrett. Um, and they were talking about um, the Ravens defense and how much it is struggling this year and how much it's not its former self. They're not going after the football as much. They're having problems they weren't having last year. It's not a typical Ravens defense. Now, I haven't watched a lot of Ravens football. I, I couldn't comment on that or not. But it got me thinking to a lot of the Steelers um, fan base and community out there at the moment that's wondering about Patrick Queen and, you know, some people are thinking he's failing. Other people think that, you know, he's doing fine. Other people are like, it's five weeks, give him a chance to learn the defense. You know, he's not partnered up with Holcomb and they're trying to play a lot of Peyton Wilson. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things I've talked about. But it, I found it interesting that the Ravens are having problems. And I looked at some of their stats just quickly and I was like, yeah, you know what, it's, it's probably true. It's interesting the Ravens are having problems with their defense because there's no more Patrick Queen. And we've got Patrick Queen with the green dot, which you and I have talked about before. It's not that he's incapable of doing it. It's not the best use of his talents. Mm -hmm. There's a difference mm -hmm. there. Like, and I'm clearing that up now because <clears throat> we get it in the comments. Half the community are like, no Patrick Queen with green dot. Half people like, you guys are stupid. What are you watching? You, yeah. you, you can have the green dot. So I'm clearing that up. He's capable of having a green dot. Is it the best thing for him? Probably not, right? You and I both can eat like, you know, um, 50 packets of Oreos probably if we want to do it in a sitting. If it is it good for us? Well, actually, if it's even worse for me because my, my allergy would kick up. But <laughs> you and I can both eat 50 packs of Oreos. It's not a good idea, right? Now, it's probably a better idea that, that Patrick Crane have the green dot, but it doesn't mean it's the most ideal thing. And so I had a little look, and, I, and I'll show up in a moment and get your take on it, but I had a little look at his sort of stats till now, right? Because people don't necessarily, like, you know, we don't know what the set, what the set scheme and play is every time they get out in the football. We can recognize, hey, that's a 3-4, and this guy looks like he's meant to do that, but we don't actually know because we're not there in Terrell Austin's mm -hmm. headset. But when I looked at it, he's got 30 combined tackles on the year so far, one tackle for a loss, um, two pass defenses, one quarterback hit, no sacks, right? But if you look at this time, if you look at through five games last year for the Ravens, he had two and a half sacks, he had four quarterback hits, he had three pass defenses. He had four tackles for a loss. And at my super, super quick math, math he had like 44 combined tackles. So a lot more productive from that perspective. And he's also this year missed, I think it's nine and a half percent of his tackles. And last year at this time, it was something more like the 5%. So the numbers are very different. He was like, had like, you know, a third more tackles. He had two and a half sacks. He had double the quarterback hits. He had the same amount of pass defense, but there's obviously a difference in production in the two years. And we're watching the Steelers' defense. There was some big life thoughts and uh, so definitely some big lapses against the Colts. And then I, I thought they'd, they'd fix some of that going into um, the Cowboys game, but there were some big lapses there too. Yeah, <clears throat> I had spoke on this a little bit on a previous podcast. Um, Totally different defensive concepts uh, between the Ravens and the Steelers. Um, when he was in Baltimore, Queen had two massive defensive tackles in front of him who just destroyed and tied up the interior of every offensive line. Now we've seen Queen engaging with guards uh, at, at, you know, four yards behind the line of scrimmage. And he does it not look good when he's forced to go up 
and engage with a guard or a center. Uh, he's not getting protected like he was. So I think it's a twofold problem. We've talked at length about the green dot and how it's uh, causing him to uh, be hesitant and not be as aggressive. But then when he does, the ball is snapped, and Benton is not a natural nose tackle. And Hayward has got the strength, but he doesn't want to be one yet. He don't really like to slide inside that much. So teams are attacking the Steelers' defensive line up the middle, and they're reaching Queen with a blocker. And a lot of times it's a guard, and he he loses those matchups. I'm shocked that Queen is pretty little. I did, I thought Queen was a little bigger than he is, uh, mm. at least. Mm. When he goes up against the guard and all, he gets starts giving ground immediately. And now, to me, when they played the Chargers in Pittsburgh, that was his best game. He was very aggressive. He had a couple of huge hits on uh, the receivers or the ball carriers. Um, And I was very encouraged. But against the Colts, you know, the way that the last two games, the Steelers are dropping off. They're not playing press coverage. They're going back to the off man. And that's not what Joey Porter Jr. is good at. Mm. So last week, Joey Porter Jr., well, the last two games have probably been his worst games. Yeah. Uh, now, Dante jo- Jackson likes to play off. So he's looked okay. And and you've seen the benefit of that. Like that interception that he got this week, like that was because he played off and then he picked the moment and he's exactly. fast enough that he went and got the ball. Like, But it's killing the Steelers pass rush because if that quarterback has to hold that ball for an extra half second, yeah. we see Watt who's got so close. We've seen Herbie. They were meeting at the quarterback. I guess can, I, can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question there? But I don't want to lose, you to lose train of thought, but it's like this important question. We always talk about the benefit. People talk about the benefits of Terrell Austin being a defensive back coach and secondary coat minded defensive coordinator. Is some of this the fact that, like, even though he's got one of the best pass rushers in the league when they're fit and healthy, which is not always the case, um, do you think this is him being torn between that and the tendency of how to use the defensive backs? Because I just wonder that sometimes. I feel like he gets a bit torn. And it's like when we had the whole big switch from zone to man, it's all it's almost like there's always got to be something new or there's got to be some deeper focus on this on the secondary. And we kind of overcomplicate it to our own peril. But to me, this all goes back to Mike Tomlin. Uh <laughs> everything, and I've talked about it this week now. To to fix a problem, you have to realize there is a problem. Yep. And then you find a solution. Yeah. Well, the problem, and we're going back four or five years, it uh, doesn't matter. Personnel's changed. Lots mm-hmm. of things have changed. The offense looks the same uh, as far as the conservativeness. Yeah. The defense looks the same. Uh, conservative. They will give up plays, but they don't want to give up over the top. They don't want to give up quick score. They yeah, want to, you know... And it to me, that's Mike Tomlin in a nutshell. He says they don't live in our fears. He lives in his fears. Yep. It, it's it's just to have that pass rush. If you look, what's the difference in the Browns and the way they play defense and yep. the Steelers? And the Steelers have ever been as much talent, if not more. But the Steelers play passive, aggressive, mm. and and it and it, sometimes it works. Because you make them make eight play drives, ten play drives, and the defense comes up with a sack, a strip sack, a forced fumble, an interception. When it doesn't, you're on the field too much. And then yeah. that last drive against the Cowboys, they were exhausted because oh, yeah. the offense could not stay on the field and get convert third downs. I think it was three of twelve. So yeah, that means you're terrible. you're not on the field very much. And then the defense is staying on the field because they can't get off the field on third down. And right. it was a yep. terrible recipe, especially when you throw in all the injuries. So 
I think that this goes back to Tomlin. And everybody's like, oh, you're, you're, you can't say anything or they call you a hater. I'm yeah. not a hater. All I'm saying is, is that everybody, the game can pass you by. And what I mean by that is Tomlin's greatest strengths are his compatibility <laughs> and his relationships with the players. We know that he is a guy that everybody wants to play for. He's a player coach. That's great. But here's the Steelers, and I said it the other night. They are a defensive-minded head coach. They are a defensive-minded franchise. They have the highest paid defense in the NFL. Yep. The biggest disparity between what they pay the defense and what they pay the offense. Mm. And so, yes, your defense has to make the stop on that drive to yep. win the game because you've got everything invested from the, the coaching to the culture, the organization to the money. Everything's invested in the defense. So you're saying – Everybody's like, oh, you're just uh, giving everybody a pass. I am not. That's the truth. And in the NFL now, everything is offensive money. So you look at the, the Ravens right now. They're struggling. Uh, part of it, they probably do miss Queen. But I think Queen misses them two big boys on the interior keeping him clean. You know what? So it kind of weakened both teams. That's what I mean. In yeah. a way, yeah. I'm gonna let, let's. We should start it off with it, but uh, thoughts out there to everyone battling, you know, the na the, na the natural uh, disasters, and it's very disastrous for a lot of people that have that have occurred over the last few weeks. So, um, prayers, thoughts, and stay safe out there. I'm Matty P with Shannon White as always. <laughs> no Steelers.